right? We've got the kitchen waste compost in here. And down inside there, we have worms. And so the worms are eating up the kitchen compost. And we're getting a little bit of rain now. If it was a drought time, we'd water it. And every day we collect, we collected it this morning already, but we get this incredible worm juice. And we use it for watering our nursery and, and other plants that are, that are in need of help. As far as obtaining anything in a store, nothing comes close to how wonderful this works at putting nutrients into your plants. Look at these coconuts, man. They're only, they're only four years old and I'm eating coconuts off of them. Yeah, this is uh, quite the sight, is to have a coconut tree where you gotta get down on your knees to harvest. Right there, there were 16 coconuts. Nice view, see, we get to watch the whales every winter. Wow. The whales park out here. So all winter long, we get to watch the whales bre breaching out here. It's really beautiful. They call me Ginger John. That's what everybody knows me by on the island. Not only are they producing the food that keeps us healthy, but they're protecting the land and the soil, which is absolutely critical to our own health. I'm sure John told you all about taro and how beautiful it is. This is the only hypoallergenic food in the world. You can give this to a baby, a day old. If they have a milk allergy to their own mother's milk, give it to a baby, it'll sustain them. That's the stuff. My name is Connor Garrett. I'm from Naples, Florida. I'm wolfing here on Ginger John's farm. I initially came here with the intention to do so and then move on, go back to what I was doing. But now I'm, I've become quite uh, enveloped in this lifestyle and I don't really plan on going back anytime soon. John's somebody who will definitely blow your mind in a lot of ways. Tools called a hoe dad. My favorite tool. You know, he does intensive farming. It's not like gardening, it's, it's not, anything in a hoop house where you're spraying chemicals and you get to prance around with the flowers, you gotta rip things out of the ground and beat the dirt off of them. An organic farmer grows soil. It's light. Um, a chemical farmer grows crops. It's got an earthworm in it. Hey, buddy. Yo, you're on camera. <laughs> That's good. So if my crops don't do well, it's not because of what I'm putting in, it's because of the soil. The whole agribusiness system has separated this whole, and I think that's part of what the local food movement and a lot of what's going on is how do we make that connectivity to it? And I don't know how individually to bridge that gap. I don't know how to do it. I don't, I don't know my consumer. I have no connection whatsoever. My farming style is to grow the food crops that have sustained civilization. When I sit down to eat, 90% of what I eat comes from this farm. I really feel like I'm cheating. So where, where do you get your food? I go to the Kroger stores. Really? Yeah. You go and shop in a grocery store for food? Sure. Every, every farmer does. I know very few who actually consume the food on their own farm. Last Sunday, we told you about a WHO report that listed several chemicals as potentially cancer-causing, including glyphosate, found in the popular weed killer Roundup. Now, in an interview for an upcoming French documentary, a Canadian scientist has been caught in an Aaron Brockovich-like moment when he's asked to defend that chemical against links to cancer rates in Argentina. Take a look. I do not believe glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it's, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, okay, so you... you, you no, but I know... So it's dangerous, I right? Know, I know people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and no, fail no, fairly regularly. Let's... Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So are you ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Even though this may look disgusting to most people because this is really um, kind of dirty looking, I know that the microorganism living in here is, in, is the most beneficial one on Earth. And so I'm not afraid to take a big drink of it and um, super probiotic a little bite to it too. And this is essentially the food for the microorganisms when I put them out there. And this one's much better. For two years I was trying to grow taro in these fields and I've been growing taro for 
about 40 years and I never had a problem, yet I couldn't get a crop to really grow. I was getting really discouraged and then I heard about um, Master Cho and Korean Natural Farming. I was able to make a lot of things that I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have to pay for it, but I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have to pay for it. 그걸 주워 가지고서 그 작물 스스로가 자립력을 키울 수 있도록 뒷받침을 해주는 것이지. 이게 우리가 그런 거가 그 초보자라도 누구든지 할수 있는 것은 시키는 대로 하면 돼요. It's kind of designed for peasants like myself. And all these different things, when combined in the right proportions, make the microorganisms thrive and brings the earth back to life. The microorganisms are inside of us, they're on our skin, they're in our lungs. They are really what connect us to the world around us. Nothing was growing, there wasn't an earthworm here, and he had IMOs to reintroduce the, that fungal um, network into his soil here, and the results have spoken for themselves. Indigenous microorganisms are basically probiotics for agriculture. IMOs are made by farmers using the materials from that land and then fermenting it and putting it back into the land where it can help the plants and the fungi and all the uh, uh, soil and everything that's there thrive. Nice. If you have totally white mold like this, it's the, the excellent IMO one that we cultivated. From, from this stage, you would collect all this into a jar and add, add equal amount of uh, sugar to the rice. And so that way we'll move it to IMO two. 자연 농업은 있는 그대로에서 나가는 거예요. 거기다 자기의 욕심을 가미한다든지 지식을 가미하는 게 아니라 있는 그대로에서. 그걸 갖다 우리는 영위 철학이라고 얘기를 해요. 영위 철학적으로 삶으로 관찰해야 되거든요. We planted the red lettuces. I was spraying them with the Korean natural farming and then I guess when I wasn't paying attention, I forgot the one at the end. Then I came back and the other red lettuces are four times the size of the other red lettuce and they were all planted on the same day, except for the front half of the row um, receives Korean natural farming um, nutrients. Four inches deep that this tester can get into the ground. So this is a conventional practice. So this is six inches. I have about eight inches deep in the organic plot. So I have scattered the IMO for uh, last season before we planted tomato in here. So you can see that I get to a deeper level in the soil compaction. And now we can see how deep it gets. So this is 12 inches. I have it about 14 inches. So from 4 inches in the conventional practice, 8 inches in the organic, now we have 14 inches in the Korean nature farming. When you have a commercial plant, you have a very small root system because they're drug dependent. So the roots don't have to travel. There's nothing for them to go out there for. It's dead. It's a dead zone. And they're just living on these chemicals that have been fed them. If you're farming uh, with, with microorganisms, you're doing a biological farming and you have a good population of microbes in the soil, the root systems will go very far out, hundreds of feet. Korean natural farming, what farmers are doing is recognizing that the microbes that are there on that farm and in that soil are really critical to the life cycle of the farm and to the health of the plants and to the health of the people who eat <laughs> those plants. I have a degree in computer science and um, decided to learn how to farm. Of all the techniques you can pick, Korean natural farming is like right on with the kids because every single thing we use is edible. Um, and so with the kids, I don't have to worry about them getting you know poison on them and eating it or like getting in dangerous situations. They just Everything they can eat, if they spill it, it's not a problem, you know. It just goes into the ground and makes things better. Now right here, you're probably looking at six billion microorganisms in this little chunk here. What Ginger John is practicing is basically complexity medicine, you know, or complexity farming. Can you see that white on your yeah. film? That, that's the microorganisms going to work here. The ones with the microorganisms were um, flourishing. There were 
twice as large, very green. The cups were full of roots. So right then we knew, wow, what is this magic? And here's an IMO4 pile here. The first time that I started applying my IMO4 to the land and I'm dumping it out, I had this incredible feeling of sovereignty that I was freeing myself from the need of spending harder money on anything that was being shipped over across the ocean from the mainland. A plant will put out a stress signal that it's lacking some kind of nutrient. It could be like boron or magnesium or calcium. The fungus that are attached to the roots of the plant will sense that imbalance. It can actually send a signal to an area that's rich and it will bring that to the plant. Some of them live in the rhizosphere, in the root of plants. Root of plants is an extremely complex environment because there are many, many organisms living there. Some of them cooperate, some of them compete. So they have to develop, in order to survive, extremely sophisticated social intelligence. Very much like human in social intelligence, just more advanced. So I came with an idea, what are the features that characterize social intelligence? Then I found that our own bacteria, the bacteria that I discovered, fall in the three standard deviation above the average. So they are like Einstein. They have special circuits to process the information and even engage in decision-making. Looking at the desert, these social bacteria play enormous role on the integrity of Earth because all these bushes that you see here are connected underneath. So all these things that you see around us, it's one big network. It's super far out. It's almost so, like, I'm way too scientific. At first I was like, no, that's some hippie stuff. <laughs> no, it's real. It happens, and it's part of healthy soil. And you'll never see it in conventional agriculture. One of the things I've been studying is soil biology with a 400 power microscope. And with that, I'm able to see the beneficial fungus and bacteria and very quickly, quantitatively, decide if I'm doing it right or not. All throughout this sample of the beneficial microorganisms, I'm finding nice fungus, and I'm finding much more biodiversity. They're the ones who are harvesting nutrients from the soil and passing them on to the roots of the plants, who are then passing them on to us. Restoring this and rejuvenating back to growing your own beneficial microorganisms and um, re-inoculating them into the environment is really the only way to turn the page and to heal our forests, to heal our ocean um, and the systems that keep us alive.